picking up again at the middle of page 86. The conductor came along checking tickets and stopped when he got to their party. He stood over Myrtle, looking down at her disapprovingly. This won't do, he said. Myrtle looked up at him, looked up at him her face expressionless. The skirt of her blue dress was spread out on the red mohair seat, and her feet in their high-topped black shoes swung a few inches above the floor. He towered over her. What won't do? Mr. Martin demanded sharply. He and Miss Dexter were sitting on the seat opposite Violet and Myrtle. The colored girl. She's going to have to ride in the colored car. That's not the law in Washington, Mr. Martin said. Mr. Martin, please, Miss Dexter murmured. Well, it's not, said Mr. Martin. Maybe not, but once we get moving, we'll only be in Washington for a few minutes, said the conductor. As soon as we cross the district border, the girl needs to go in the colored car and stay there. But she can't ride by herself. She's just a child, Mr. Martin said. The conductor shrugged. She'll be among her own people. I'm sure they'll look after her. Mr. Martin got to his feet, his face twisting into an ugly scowl that made his scar look more menacing. He no longer looked like polite Mr. Martin. He looked like some dangerous thug in a moving picture show. Violet felt a lurch in her stomach. She had never seen adults fight before and she didn't want to. Violet looked at Myrtle and then at Miss Dexter. Miss Dexter was determinedly looking out the window. Violet looked back at Myrtle who looked away. Violet was sure there was nothing Mr. Martin, let alone Violet herself, could do. Rules were rules. But it seemed really unfair to Myrtle. She reached out and took Myrtle's hand and glared at the conductor. The conductor ignored her. I'm sorry, sir, he said to Mr. Martin, not sounding sorry at all. You can keep her in here for a few minutes if you want, but once we cross the district line, we'll be under Virginia law. It's my responsibility to enforce the law he smiled thinly, and to have anyone who doesn't comply arrested. This last sentence seemed to deflate Mr. Merton, like an inner tube with a pin stuck in it. His face went from red to pink to pale, and his fists unmade themselves. The conductor pressed his advantage. The ticket discount is only on this tourist car, sir. It'll be $2 extra for the child's ticket in the colored car, or $1 if she's under eight. I'm seven, said Myrtle. She held Violet's hand tightly, but still didn't look at her. Her eyes had been going from Mr. Martin to the conductor and back to Mr. Martin like someone watching a tennis match. Mr. Martin reached into his pocket and pulled out a handful of change. He counted out four silver quarters. All the fight had gone out of him, Violet thought. The conductor pocketed the dollar and made out a ticket, looking victorious. He slapped the ticket down on the seat beside Myrtle. Hurry up, girl, he said. This train's about to start moving. Myrtle walked off down the corridor, her head held high. She did not look back. The conductor stalked close behind her. Mr. Martin hadn't sat down yet and was trying to get Miss Dexter to look at him. Miss Dexter, I'd have thought, since the suffragists had taken the whole car, it would have been possible to argue that. Miss Dexter turned suddenly from the window and glared at him. Mr. Martin, I'll thank you refrain from making any more scenes between here and Tennessee. This may just be a tourist jaunt to you, but to us it represents the culmination of a 72-year battle. Mr. Martin glowered at her. Then the train started with a lurch and threw him into her lap. A thousand pardons, Miss Dexter, Mr. Martin apologized, getting into his own seat with difficulty. I can assure you that I care every bit of, as much about the women's suffrage issue as you do he added frostily. I find that very hard to believe, said Miss Dexter. But if you actually care about the Susan B. Anthony Amendment, then don't jeopardize our chances by making ugly scenes about unrelated issues. It is not an unrelated issue, Mr. Martin said heatedly. It's all the same issue. If you can't see that, you sound like a Bolshevik, said Miss Dexter, and turned pointedly to look out the window. Mr. Martin turned the other way and stared across the aisle, out the opposite window. The other suffragists in the seats around them were all trying hard to look like they weren't staring at Miss Dexter and Mr. Martin. Violet felt extremely uncomfortable. This was going to be a long train trip. She wished Myrtle had been allowed to stay. Before we start reading chapter eight, 
I want you to think about if you were in a similar situation. Let's say you were with a friend who is different from you and somebody pointed that out or treated them differently. What would you do? If you were Violet in this situation, what would you do? So that's the question to think about.